Back in July 23, Google introduced Notebook LM. And uh, back then, they said they put it together because they were hearing from students and professors and knowledge workers that there was a big challenge in synthesizing facts and ideas from multiple sources. So sort of that was a genesis for Notebook LM. Initially, when it was launched, it would work with Google Docs, so one can upload. Uh, one could upload uh, a Google document, a Google Docs document or documents, and do one of three things: get a summary, ask questions, uh, generate ideas. Over time, they have been adding other features and capabilities. Uh, in uh, early June 2024, one of the things they did was uh, they they powered Notebook LM with their Gemini 1.5 Pro model, which I've done a couple of videos. They're talking about the power of Gemini 1.5 Pro, and I will leave a link to those videos in the description below. However, uh, about a little over a week ago, what caught my attention was that now one could use Notebook LM to generate stunningly real AI podcast without a mic. And, uh, and I'm like, I got to try this. So in this video, I'm going to try it for the first time and record it and you know showcase this capability capability to you all as well but before i get going please consider liking this video and please consider subscribing to my channel thank you so before we get you know, actually go do a podcast here using notebook lm if you have not played around with it or not familiar with it just head out to notebook lm.google or just google it and you know not too hard you will end up here and it kind of tells you about how it all works yeah notebook lm is a personalized ai research assistant so think, think of it as a research assistant backed by gemini 1.5 pro and uh, kind of walks you through which all the different things you can do um, one of the things it talks about is source grounded with inline citations so you would get inline citations back basically telling you where it got the information like you know you, know, you, you would have some footnotes that tells you where it picked up the information the other thing they highlight here is that your personal data is not used to train notebook lm um so you know check check out all the privacy and terms um it's always good to do, always good to do that if you're going to be using this product so now we will <laughs> build a podcast so my idea is I want to take a PDF document that I have. It's a research paper I um, published last year and it's available all over the place. Um, so I'm going to go find that guy. And, uh, you know, basically it, it requires you have a Google account. And, uh, you know, this is what it would look like. And you just click on sources and you have different ways to provide the source uh, documents. One, you can just upload from your local uh, computer. Yeah, Google Drive, you can provide a link uh, like to a YouTube video or just paste some text in there. So here we go. I am going to <coughs> um, upload my document, uh, upload the document that I, here's my research paper. All right, so it's done. All right, da, 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 suggested questions, etc. And deep dive conversation to host. So right now the limit, the limitation, and then this whole thing is experimental. Keep that in mind. Uh, it's you know Google is telling us it's experimental. It's not their final product. So it's going to do a good job, great job, uh, but, but it's not going to be consistent. We'll hallucinate stuff like that. It's still experimental. So keep that in mind. Obviously over time they'll have collected enough feedback and fine tuned all these things that were. I'm sure it'll be a final product there so the one of the constraints right now is that this podcast that it's going to generate or this audio it's going to generate it's two hosts it's english only u.s english uh, so options are limited but i can guarantee you all of that will start to expand over time in future releases so generate all right it, it's done um so it took uh, my research paper and you know at a quick glance i mean it does a great job like summarizing it this is essentially what it is um 
let's give it a listen. And this is uh, what I have been looking forward to. <laughs> let's see. Everyone, welcome back. Ready for another deep dive? Today we're tackling how AI is picking up, well, the language of Wall Street. Hmm. You know AI is everywhere these days, but finance, it's almost like its own world, right? Uh, With its own lingo and everything. Right, yeah. And that's what makes this research paper so fascinating. It basically asks, can we make AI even smarter when it comes to, you know, the way we talk about money? To help us break it down, we have our expert with us. So this one's really interesting to me. Could be huge for AI and finance, wouldn't you say? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. What we're looking at here is something called word embeddings. Okay, word embeddings. So, like, imagine teaching AI a new language, right? All right, I'm pausing this. Um, they're, giving, they're giving my paper way too much credit. Um, I'm not about to change anything in the world. <laughs> but let's listen for another maybe a few more seconds or half, half a minute or so. Instead of like Spanish or Chinese, it's learning how Wall Street talks. So it's not just about like looking up the definition of interest in a dictionary. No, not at no. all. It's about actually understanding how that word is used differently in a financial context. Exactly. Exactly. And the cool thing is they use this massive data set for this research, over a million customer complaints to the CFPB. Wow. They really threw the AI in the deep end with all that, huh? A million complaints. That's a lot of financial jargon. <laughs> did using such specific data actually make a difference? It did. It actually did. They found the AI trained on these complaints was way better at understanding like the nuances of banking language. Interesting. Compared to an AI. Yeah, so that, that all, all that is true. But what I don't like is they keep throwing in Wall Street and stuff like that. This paper was all about banking. And uh, anyway, I'll leave a link to my paper if you, <laughs> if you have any interest in reading that. Um, so, yeah, that, I mean, a whole lot of it is true, uh, but, you know, it, it feels like there's exaggeration going on, you know, um, it's going to change the world and Wall Street and, uh, all right, okay, another 20, 30 seconds. Trained on, say, just general news articles or something. Exactly, yeah, much better. Okay, so walk us through this. How do you even start teaching AI the language of you know banking. It's not like you just handed a finance textbook, right? Right. You're right. It's a bit more involved. They used a technique called a co-occurrence matrix. A co-occurrence matrix. Yeah. So they basically fed the AI this massive data set and then had it analyze which words popped up together a lot. So it's like they gave the AI a dictionary and a mountain of customer complaints. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, it is true. I, I, <laughs> I'm laughing because... Uh, <laughs> someone talking about my paper um yeah <laughs> it's kind of funny let me just let me see let me fast forward here so it actually under payments as this whole concept precisely and to really drive this home they actually made visualizations like how different words were related visualizations that's cool yeah like imagine a web connecting these ideas one example they gave was the relationship between let's say overdraft fees and nsf and well, I'm on the edge of my seat. Did our bank set? All right. Okay, that's enough. Uh, I'm not going to torture any one of us with any more of the podcast here. Again, I it, it is. <laughs> I have two different reactions. One is it's really cool, but on the other hand, uh, uh, I don't know. It's just creepy. Maybe because it's my paper and I know what it's all about. So. It, the gist of their podcast would be true. Like, you know, that's exactly what I did. I was trying to show that if you use banking specific corpus or corpora and train um, and train your model doing that, it's going to be much better than, you know, just random or just general articles, etc. So, yeah, um, yeah, I'm going to have to like linger on, <laughs> linger on this. But uh, it's cool. It's cool. I'd, I'd say go try it out for yourself. I, um, you know, this is a document, but apparently you're able to also select, uh, you know, you can upload a YouTube uh, video or or uh, put in a website link, uh, etc. Okay, uh, I'm just trying to, I wanted to do this, do this uh, in a way so that you could see for the first time my reaction to this. And, uh, you know, at the same time, show you some Pretty cool capabilities that's, uh, that are being built at Google. There's certainly going to be some evolution here for sure, uh, but I, absolutely in the right direction. Absolutely in the right direction. Hey, thanks for checking this out. Thanks for <laughs> humoring me by <laughs> checking this video out. 
um, yeah, a little, a little freaked out, but at the same time, really excited about where all this is headed. Please think about uh, subscribing to my channel. Until next time.